the conception of American exceptionalism that I'm, I'm seeing a lot in the news, mm -hmm. that somehow American exceptionalism means quite literally the superiority of American culture, and in fact, the desire to learn from another culture would be seen as weakness or even moral, uh, moral failing. Oh yes, and you've raised a very interesting point here because even um, at the level of our Supreme Court, uh, we have arguments from the uh, extreme right saying, well, uh, we shouldn't be examining the constitutions and the legal systems of any foreign countries. What do they have to teach us? Mm -hmm. That's that's the bad kind of uh, American exceptionalism. Um, we uh, we see this in the, in the halls of the U.S. Congress too. So, somehow uh, to look at foreign the way that foreign uh, societies conduct their affairs is, is very un-American. That's the bad form of American exceptionalism. I would argue that there's a good form of American exceptionalism, however, uh, and that form says that America, United States of America, uh, more than any other country in the world, has welcomed people from all over the world, and that we are a hyphenated nation. Mm -hmm. We are Irish Americans, African Americans, Italian Americans, Asian Americans of various types, Chinese Americans, Japanese Americans, and we are a hyphenated, uh, a hyphenated nation in ways that give us an enormous uh, flexibility in terms of uh, our dealings with uh, the rest of the world. And that flexibility, that energy, and that ability to accept and develop ideas from elsewhere, even if our leaders sometimes say that that's really not what we should be doing, uh, that de facto uh, energy uh, that, that, uh, that, that comes and energizes our, our body politic, mm -hmm. it seems to me that that is American exceptionalism in the good sense of the term. Okay.